So I'm going to tell you one thing about Kathy. I met Kathy almost a year ago at an RPOF quarterly, and she was just so exciting to listen to and so enthusiastic about what her journey is. And at that time, I was sitting there eating dinner outside on the beach, and she walked up to me, and we started talking. And she said, do you have my book? And I said, no, I don't, I don't know about it. And she goes, well, I'm going to give you a book. I want you to take it home and read it. So I took it home. And of course, Walter starts reading it first. And uh, back in January, I went to Washington, D.C. I stayed at the Trump Hotel. And in my haste of being so overwhelmed by treat, being treated like a queen at the Trump Hotel and packing up, I left my book on the nightstand at the Trump Hotel. <laughs> so I, I hopefully I'm getting, well, I have already received another book today and I'm very excited. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Kathy Chamberlain. She's the deplorable author. She is a four-time startup business owner, published author of a self-help book featured on CNN Worldwide, owner of the nation's first all-female construction company, Woohoo! and former Florida licensed state building contractor. She's a sought-after sought political speaker and has been a regular contributor on Salem Media Radio Network. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Kathy Chamberlain. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you so much, everybody. It is so great to be back out again on the circuit. And thank you, Barbara, for such a warm welcome, and you and Anita both for all the hard work you did to make this happen and to invite me. I know we went back and forth quite a bit on emails to make this day happen. What a great crowd, and how brave you are. You're the first ones that officially had me back uh, to speak. So thank you for the bravery in getting our country back up and running. It is critical that we keep there. I want to give you a little bit of a background about how I came about to writing this book, because believe you me, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there truly is a God. Amen. Amen. Now, I have to tell you, I was brought up in an extremely conservative home. My dad was a helicopter pilot in the Army. He was a yeah. Vietnam War veteran. Yeah. And if you ever saw that movie, The Great Santini, yeah. that was my dad. <laughs> And I was the middle child, and as a middle child, I do what they do best. I rebelled. And I ended up pretty much out on my own by the time I was 16. Now, we grew up in Washington, D.C., but I moved clear across the country. And I lived for 15 years in California. And I got very properly indoctrinated as a flaming liberal. So, I learned exactly what they do and how they do it. And after 15 years of that, I started thinking seriously about politics again, and I ended up falling in love with a man that changed my mind about everything. 1992. He was a politician. Can anybody think who that might have been? No good guess. Most people do guess that. How about Ross Perot? Hey, Ross! I just fell in love with Ross. <laughs> and I loved him so much, I volunteered for his uh, campaign committees out in uh, the, the L.A. area. And because of his philosophy, I started moving back towards the center. And I became an independent. And I stayed an independent throughout the years. I moved to Florida here about 25 years ago. I now live in St. Petersburg, which is where I've been living ever since. And as an independent, I never thought about joining the Republican Party. No, I was pretty happy where I was until I fell in love with another man. Anybody want to try to guess who that might have been? <laughs> 2016, our president, 
Donald J. Trump. Thank God every day that we have him in control of our country. So yeah, so I switched parties and I became a Republican because of course here in Florida you can't vote in the primaries unless you decide one way or the other. So I love our president. And about two years ago, and that's not, by the way, that story, that little bit that I just told you is not why I believe in God so much. The reason I believe in God even more than that is because up until two years ago, I was a licensed building contractor here in the state of Florida. And yes, I started up the nation's first all-female construction company. I called it Tool Timing Baby Dolls. <laughs> And we, I had the pink pickup trucks and everything. We did fantastic work. I mean, I was a hands-on contractor. I could do flooring, drywall, you name it, framing, tiling. And I loved that. But then as the 2008 crisis hit, and by 2010, most contractors were out of business. So I went on my own then and started up Kathy the Contractor. And one day in 2017, in October, Everything changed. I was out and in, in Kissimmee, and I was inspecting roofs after Hurricane Irma hit. And I climbed 10 feet up my ladder like I had done so many times before. And my ladder just shifted enough to the left where I let go and I fell backwards onto a concrete slab. <laughs> I was airlifted to Osceola uh, Trauma Center. And I remember I kept praying to God, please don't let it be my back. <laughs> but it was. And I ended up breaking my back in several places and I broke both of my wrists. And then I, I got life-threatening uh, uh, blood clots. So, you know, it's something any, anybody else hasn't gone through. I mean, we all go through our little crises. But I came out of that realizing that my entire life had changed. The doctor said, no more construction. And I was like, you can do anything to me, but don't take away my power tools. <laughs> so I had to rethink my entire future. I was 62 years old. That was a tough one. And I was laying in the hospital bed, feeling sorry for myself, but you know, deplorables, you can't keep us down, right? So I remember watching day in and day out Fox News. And my sisters were watching over me, they took shifts, and they told me later, I really don't remember too much of this, but they said as soon as I fall asleep, they said, thank God, they'd change it to CNN. <laughs> I'd wake up and go, no, 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 <laughs> going back on Fox. So I started thinking as I laid in that hospital bed, why are people treating our president so bad? And I remembered about a book that I read, that I read back when I was a liberal. How many here have heard of Saul Alinsky? Yeah. I have his book in my car. Does it look like that? So, Saul Alinsky, for those who don't know, he's the father of community organizing. Obama learned everything he knows from this man. And Bill Lair is the weather underground. Uh, Hillary did her thesis, her college thesis on Alinsky. He was her idol. Now, he wrote this book back in the 70s, but it's worldwide. It's a blockbuster. And in this book, he lists 13 tactics, tactics that the left uses against us every single day and against our president. And the shame is so many people don't know. They have no idea what these tactics are. They've been using these tactics against us for decades. It's why our universities are infiltrated with looming left leftists and our media. It's all a plan, and they're nearly, it's all, the plan is to transform our country to socialism, and folks, we are one election away. 
So I decided to write a book because I've never seen somebody write a book about the tactics. I've seen many books on Olinsky, but I've never seen them actually anybody take those tactics and flush them out one at a time. And that's what I did with my book. I take every chapter starts with one of his 13 tactics, and I use current events to explain how they're used on a daily basis against us. And more importantly, how we can recognize them and use those tactics back on the left. I want to ask you, how many people have heard of Powered Pivot? A lot fewer. And they are critical to understand what is being done to our country. Flower Piven lit, uh, lived at about the exact same time as Alinsky, well, the exact same time, back in the 60s and 70s. They were, a, uh, they were college professors married to each other, Richard Flower and Francis Fox Piven, so everybody calls them Flower Piven. And they wrote a series of strategy papers. And one of the most famous ones, for example, was written in 1966, and it was called The, the Weight of the Poor. A strategy for ending poverty. And their whole thinking was if we can throw everybody onto welfare, yeah. we'll collapse the system, necessitating the government to step in, pay everybody a guaranteed annual income, and voila, we're socialists. So I like to say that their strategies actually are the blueprint for the left today, and Alinsky, Alinsky excuse me, wrote the vehicle by which, we, how we get there, the tactics. Um, I had, and let me give you, by the way, one of the most common Alinsky tactics, you see it every single day being used against our president, and that's tactic number five, ridicule is man's most potent weapon. So whenever we hear them say to our president, you're a xenophobe, racist, homophobe, a white supremacist, this is what they're using against him. Ridicule is man's most potent weapon. He uses it too. Little Marco. <laughs> And so our president, there's no doubt in my mind, he knows the Alinsky tactics and he uses them all the time. Unfortunately, people who don't recognize that are shocked. They're not used to seeing a president behave that way. So to them, he's unpresidential. We can't think that way. Now, I actually came here today with a pre-planned speech one that I've been doing on my Florida Deplorable book tour before the Wuhan virus hit. And something happened to me over the weekend that hit me so hard. The speech that I had written was all about the riots and defunding the police and how the tactics were being used against us and whatnot. But I can't do that now. So I'm going to pull a Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> and I'm going to give you guys, and this, this could be the end of my career, okay? But I'm going to give you guys a different kind of a lesson on Alinsky tactics. Now, I met a gentleman, and we talked briefly about him. I don't know how many people know, I met him about a year ago at a Trump event. He's the chairman down at the Hillsborough uh, Republican Executive Committee. Retired Colonel James Warshuck. Anybody in here know the Colonel? Okay, great. So I met him about a year ago. And I've gotten to know him a bit over the past year, and I'm just honored to know the man. And I have a lot of respect for him. Well, it's funny because 
The next day, he gave me his business card, and the next day, I was thinking, geez, you know, that guy's name sounds so familiar. How do I know him? And then it dawned on me, I quote him in my book. <laughs> And I emailed him and I said, oh my God, Colonel, you're not going to believe this. I quote you in my book. <laughs> and so now, every time I run into him, he gives me a stack of his business cards because I always, for veterans, when I sell my book to a veteran, I always include his card on page 174 where I quote him. And that's in a chapter called Unmasking the Boogeyman. And that chapter is all about because he worked under General Flynn for the NSC. He's a 30-year intel officer. Very impressive career. So what happened over the weekend, I got a very disturbing uh, private message on my Facebook group. And by the way, if anybody wants to join my Facebook group, it's a private group, Rules for Deplorables group. You'll love it. I vet people extremely hard. I've got over 2,000 members, not one snowflake, I'm proud to say. <laughs> uh, but at any rate, so I get this private message telling me that I'm not allowed to post Colonel Warshuk's articles anymore on their group Facebook page. This is a Republican leader who sent me this private message. I was like, really? <laughs> okay, why? And it turns out that he put a post on his page that pissed some people off. And it was basically about Antifa. I had to go back and look at the post, because I do uh, uh, venture onto his Facebook page on occasion. I was the very first comment on his post. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you get him, go. So I wrote this leader back, and I said, I don't understand. I, I don't see anything really wrong with it. And as a matter of fact, I, I gave the first post, the first comment on his post. I said, can you explain further to me what is wrong with the post? He used some words about it. It was a post, it was an article about Obama. And it, he, he used, you know, Antifa. And he was talking about Antifa, and he was saying, we, we've got to stop these people. Duh. Yeah, <laughs> we do. And he used some, what she called, incendiary language, because he said, if we don't stop them, they're going to find us in the streets, and they're going to murder, they're going to kill us. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? That is the truth. Yeah. So somehow or another, his post and his language in that post ended up in the Tampa Bay Times newspaper. And after that happened, and by the way, if anybody doesn't know the Tampa Bay Times newspaper, it's a real liberal rack. You might as well put something in the New York Times. <laughs> so I read the article, and it was a hit job on him. I was devastated to read that. And then all of a sudden, I go back to the post, and you guys, there were hundreds of comments all of a sudden from lefties. I checked them. I went to their Facebook page and I looked. They were all hardcore leftists that just ganged up on him. And I called him because I wanted to hear his side of the story. Alinsky tactic number 13 is pick a target, uh, freeze it, so pick a target, usually that's Trump, but we've seen General Flynn, we've seen Bill Barr, we know how they pick targets. Freeze it, that means basically you just hold it in the public eye for a really long time, as long as you can. Personalize it and polarize it. So personalize it, you say all sorts of bad things about that person, 
and then polarize, you try to separate them from their base, from their supporters, from their people. So I chose to talk about this today because to me, there are several reasons we could possibly lose this election. One is, if you've ever heard yourself or you've ever heard anybody else say, gee, I wish Trump wouldn't tweet so much. And by the way, my eighth chapter is called Trick or Tweet. <laughs> Did you get that far, Walter? <laughs> That's a great chapter. It goes into the psychology behind. I did a lot of research, and my, my book contains over 400 footnotes, so it is really well researched. Now, this tweeting, folks, if you ever hear somebody say that again, you let them know. Or if they say, I wish you'd be a little more presidential, you let them know every time they say that, they are taking his power away and giving it to the left. Rhinos is killing, they're killing us. And this person, I don't know whether she's a rhino or not, but I don't understand how Republicans can turn on Republicans. I mean, I got to tell you, and I could catch some flack from saying this, but I'm still an independent at heart. The only reason I've changed parties is because of Donald J. Trump. And there's a whole lot of others out there like me. We have got to keep ourselves unified. Whatever it takes, we have got to stick up for each other and support each other. And by the way, I have some of the Colonel's cards. And it will be darn good of you all. He needs our support. Last time I talked to him, he told me he was getting really vile death threats. Death threats. He could use our support. So I want to ask you all, if anybody is kind enough, go join his Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because you know what? If we don't stick up, and I told him this, I said, you're, you're on a front line before me. And by the way, after I looked at his post, guess what? I started getting them. Only because... It was either because I said, hey, I'm going to support this man anyway, or because I happened to have the first comment on his post. <laughs> Whatever the reason now, when the, guy, when the guy came, when the leftist came over to my Facebook page, that's my personal page, not the group page, because he can't get in there. <laughs> um, but when he came over to mine and started calling me all sorts of names, I handled it like I always handle those kind of people. I said, gee, you know, thank you very much. Alinsky's tactic, number five, ridicule is man's most potent weapon. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to share my book. Here's the link. Go order it. <laughs> it's going to get ugly. There's no question about it. But we need to stick up for each other. A whole lot more than we have. And if you know of anybody who's a rhino, you give it to them straight because there's nothing more important than winning this election. And the people who are rhinos, I've come to find out, are people who truly do not believe we are one election away from socialism. They really don't think that. They think America is too big to fail. <laughs> They think that this could never happen to us. Well, let me tell you, and this is usually the lecture I give to them. My chapter number two is called Viva la Revolution. And it's all about Venezuela and AOC and how, and how her ideologies are going to turn us into a Venezuela 
In how many years? Let me tell you what happened to the Venezuelans. They were the richest country in Latin America back in 1998. The wealthiest. They were like us. They lived like us. They had lunch like this. I mean, the wealthiest. And within 10 short years, they are now the poorest country. I want you to take your age right now and add 10 years to it. And think where you'll be when you have to eat grass, eat your pets. This is what they're doing there now. I think the average person has lost 25 pounds the last time I looked. But let me tell you how they lost their freedoms. The very first thing they did when Hugo Chavez got elected and Hugo Chavez was their version of Bernie Sanders. And if you don't think Biden is a Bernie Sanders, because he's just a puppet. Yes. And my own personal thinking is that they're just going to shove him in there and whoever they pick for that vice presidential spot, they're going to call the 25th Amendment on him after he's set in stone, like they tried to do to our president. So, with, back to Venezuela, when they elected Hugo Chavez, why? Because they were all offered free stuff, right? It's what gets most people. We all want free stuff, but it's not a realistic thing. So, the first thing Hugo Chavez did when he got in power, he added 11 justices to their Supreme Court. All liberals. Remember how we've heard the Democrats, we've heard them say that's what they want to do. They told us that is the first thing they're going to do, folks. And then they went after the Second Amendment. Now, how many people in here, I'll be the first to raise my hand, have said, oh, you're not taking my gun, uh -uh -uh -uh, not from my cold, dead fingers, right? How many of us have said that before? Let me tell you how they did it. And then tell me you wouldn't give your guns up. So they sent out their SWAT teams in the middle of the night, and people were facing a 20-year prison sentence. That's what they made this, the punishment for owning a gun. <coughs> they sent a SWAT team out just like they did to Roger Stone. Exact same way. Storm your home. None of your friends are around to help you. And that's why they do it that way. And then they throw you in jail. Now if they throw your husbands in jail and they come back to you and say, hey, the only way we're letting them out is if you give us his guns or he's going to be in hard labor camps for 20 years. What would you do? Oh, okay. well, there are some of those too. But you see how it happens and it only took five years for them to lose all of that. Five years. That's really scary. We are not going to have an opportunity to do this over again. So, the last thing I want to say is that one of Alinsky's famous quotes, which is one of my favorites, is this. The judgment of history leans heavily on the outcome of success or failure. It spells the difference between the traitor and the patriotic hero. There can be no such thing as a successful traitor, for if one succeeds, he becomes the founding father. And that's what's going to happen. If the left wins, they will be the founding fathers, they will be the patriotic heroes, because they will rewrite our history so that it looks really good for them. Folks, I want to leave you with this. Edmund Burke said, and I know you've all heard it before, the only thing necessary 
For the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. You gotta all speak out. We've gotta all unite. And you have to get involved. You're not gonna have a second chance. Thank you so very much for your time.